Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today? I'm awesome sauce, Nathan. You you crack me up, brother man. Dude, you have me crying over here before the <laughs> podcast episode. Hey, if you're going to do it, might as well have fun, right? Absolutely. Okay, so last week, we kind of went back to some of the basics of client getting and we did a deep dive on... Um, on uh, qualifying people and it was you said it was kind of a weird experience for you because that's the that's kind of the stuff that's so ingrained in your in your memory and in who you are that you kind of forget that a lot of times people aren't people aren't at your level and I know from working with you behind the scenes you're actually kind of off in a totally different trajectory right now and I kind of wanted to talk about what's going on in current land and Porter world and, and uh, some of the things that we've been talking about behind the scenes in influence architects that may not be familiar or the same old treaded course that the listeners to the podcast might be used to. Right. Well, there's a lot of people that um, speak in front of audiences or, sell courses or work with different people at different stages in business. And there's this notion of identifying certain people at this level and other people are at this other level is a big no, no. It's like, there's this weird political correctness that's going through our space. And I think it's horseshit. I think um, there's a reason that people start a thing and then they struggle and they struggle and then they get something right and then they hit a glass ceiling and then they struggle and then they, right? My life has gone that way. Like I learn hard, but once I've learned a lesson, fuck, I've learned that lesson, right? And I think there's a lot of almost discrediting of the process of becoming who you want to become that people in, I'll just say my space, people who teach and lead and guide other people how to get to that next level. I think there's a lot of discrediting of people who are stuck. And it's fascinating to me because I see some people in my world who, and and I love these people, but they don't have enough sense to like not put their hand on a stovetop and take it away immediately. And they're fucking killing it in their business. And there's other people in my world that have more intelligence and more emotional sense and more social acuity and more ability at their thing that are stuck. And they just can't seem to fucking get past that fucking stuck thing. And I'm like, cool. So if, if I'm constantly talking to, to people about this level or that level or even the next level of what I do and how I can work with people, why is it some people never seem to go from this level to that level? Like, what's the fucking problem? The fascination for me has always been, since I was an early teenager, the fascination for me has always been, what is it? How does it work? How can I do it so that I can have it? What is it? How does it work? How do you do it so you can have it? Whatever that means to you, it. God, source, spirit, fucking science, like whatever, it. What is it? How do some people play with it and get results and other people just beat their head against the fucking wall because they can't figure out why it isn't working. That's my fascination. And one thing that I've noticed, and I've been thinking about this for months, 
Why do some people come in, they get a piece of information for me, it unlocks the thing that they needed and they are off to the races. And, and we've got people that have come into our world doing 50, 60, 70 grand a year in their business. And in 12 months, they just did like 200 grand. Like that happens. There's people that come into my world that make 300 grand a year and for the life of them, they can't fucking get beyond that regardless of the tactics. Here's the rub. It is behavior. Your behavior dictates everything. Well, we don't start with behavior, but that's the thing that I want to talk about today. I want you to look at your life. If you're listening to this show right now, I want you to look at your life. And if you in any area of your life don't say, that's fucking amazing. And if it never changed, I would be the happiest, most satisfied, fulfilled person on the planet. If you actually can say that about every area of your life, you're either listening to this podcast not to better your situation or you're fucking delusional. So for the rest of you, if you can look at your life in business, in your relationships, in your health, in your connection to whatever you call it, and it's not amazing, there's room for growth. And if there's room for growth, that means that you need to change. You need to become something different so that you experience different. And that comes down to your behaviors. So in the area of your life, I want you to look and I want you to try and see the behaviors, the the habits. How do you habituate your existence in that area of your life? And what you'll notice is that you've got habits, whether it's you do this too much or you don't do that enough or you do this and you do that, and you do this, and you do that, and you do pretty soon there's no focus or energy. And I want you to look at what it is that you're spending your time doing. There's a lot of people that they just go buy more information and buy more information and buy more information. They're stuck in that fucking loop. Their behavior is, is they're trying to buy their way out of their issue instead of fucking buckling down and taking different actions and putting in the work. And then there's other people that They'll figure out a tactic and 17 years later, they're still doing the same fucking thing. And guess what? They, they got a certain place and that's all they get. It all comes down to behavior. Why you don't do what you need to do. The truth is we all actually know what the fuck we need to do. We might not know exactly how to do it. We might need to learn some skill sets. But if we want something different in any area of our life, we have an idea of what we need to do. Why don't some of us do that? Before we jump into that, I'm going to ask you a question because I'm not sure I agree with you that we all know what we need to do. I feel like when I look around at humanity and being in the, the marketing and the business world, It seems like there are certain people that know that they need to do things differently, but it seems like a a large percentage of the population are completely satisfied or at least pacified being just being, you know, uh, response driven where something happens and they do what they're programmed to do. And that's, you know, they, they wake up, they go to work, they come home, they watch TV, they go to bed and anything that happens in the world, they just do their pre-programmed responses. It seems like a lot of people don't know what, or don't know that there's even the opportunity to change and improve their lives. There is always going to be a percentage of the population that's walking around essentially unconscious, uh, acting under their automatic behaviors, their software, they're basically human robots. And those people generally are not looking for how do I get more clients? How do I charge more? How do I learn an extra specialized version of my skill set? How do I connect with somebody? How do I end up on stage speaking in front of 1,183 people who could be my ideal client avatar? How do I figure out how to get in front of more. Those people that you're talking about, there is a percentage of them. I believe there will always be a percentage of them until we're all actually robots. They're walking around essentially unconscious and that's where they're at. Their present level of awareness is that. I think what you mean to say is, is there's a bunch of people that are stuck in loops and they want different 
but they don't know how to get different. Is that more? Yeah. And I would say even in our field, in our space, Mm -hmm. that makes up a lot of even me. And to take it a step further, wanting different, knowing that I need to take action to make things different, knowing which actions to take to make things different and Mm -hmm. still not taking those actions. Yep. Yep. Well, there's, there's two big things we're talking about here. One is having the awareness that something's wrong. And that is where we observe what our patterns are. What are our habits? How are we behaving in this area of my world? If I don't have the results that I'm looking for in my business, what are my behaviors? What do I do daily on routine? What do I do weekly on routine? Cool. Well, and then get honest with ourselves. What do I think is wrong with my business? I want different results. What the fuck does that mean? I want more clients. Okay, cool. You need to have more conversations. Another answer is, is I want to make more per client. Cool. You need to figure out how to price your shit differently. If we get down to the actual what's simple about that, people actually do know what they need to do. They don't know how to do it, but they know what they need to do. I am not, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with the results that I'm getting from my business. Okay, cool. What would better results look like? More clients. Cool. What do you need to do? I don't know. Bullshit. How do you get a fucking client? You have a conversation with somebody. We know what we need to do. We're just not doing it. Why? So I deal with this. <laughs> I got into Leeds Lab probably two months before everybody else had access to it. Mm-hmm. I have had relations, not relations, but <laughs> me and you talk frequently. You give me all of this information. And for probably nine months after I knew exactly what I needed to do, I still wasn't freaking doing it. And I, I feel like even in my personal life, sometimes I'm like, Oh, why did I just eat that? I know that that was not what I should be eating. Or why didn't I get up and and go for my walk this morning? I know I need to be doing that every single morning. Mm -hmm. So I, I am a highly, or I'm a a pretty high achiever in life. And even I still, I know what I need to do. And sometimes it just takes a kick in the ass to make me actually do it. Why? Changing our behaviors is difficult because your behaviors, you don't like, you just said the food thing, right? Well, you just recently started walking because you decided that having a behavior that was more prone to get you a result, more in alignment with what you wanted, you started doing a thing. And if you keep doing it, it will become a behavior and eventually it will become a habit. And eventually it'll just be autopilot and you won't even have to think about it. You will just automatically fucking do it. Well, Guess what? If you wake up in the morning, you come up from being asleep and you get out of bed on your own and you fucking walk around your life all day long, you're operating on dozens of pre-programmed behaviors that get you exactly what your life is like. So it's bullshit to say you don't know what to do. It's also bullshit to say, why don't I do it? Because Doing what you've always done that's getting you the result that you're currently getting is easier than changing your behavior. And we're not willing to take a step. You went through Leads Lab. You were even in it earlier and you are in behind the scenes. The thing that stopped you from moving forward is not necessarily the thing stopping everybody else. You had a thing in your mindset that was also a behavior that kept you from taking specific actions. You actually needed to go through a a very simple process to go, oh, so I want more clients. Cool. How do I do that? Oh, I need to have more conversations. Hey, I'm having more conversations. Hey, these are the wrong fucking people. Oh my God, what would the right people look like? Oh, they'd have that at least. Then you went and had more conversations. Then guess what? The people that had the thing that made it easier for you to do your thing that you were having conversations with easily became your clients. That's not necessarily the same mental block as everybody else, but what were your behaviors? 
Your behaviors were, I'm shit posting on Facebook, but I'm never telling them I can sell them something. Hey, I'm shit posting on Facebook and I'm telling them that I can do this thing for these kinds of people. Fuck, those are the wrong kind of people. Hey, I'm shit posting on Facebook and I'm talking to these people specifically. And if they've got this problem, that issue, and that asset, I might be able to help them. It might make sense for us to talk. It's the same behavior with a slight adjustment, but if you never decided to shit post on Facebook, you would have never gotten to the point where you were shit posting on Facebook, talking to a specific group of people about a specific issue they're having because they've got a specific asset. And hey, if they want different results, it might make sense for us to talk. But your behaviors that you were doing, you needed a little bit more information so you could see it from a different perspective. And then you had to, to decide. That's as simple as it gets. These are the results I'm getting. I'm not totally in love with that. What do I want different? I would like more clients. You change your behaviors, and if they're the right behaviors, pretty soon you're having more conversations, and now you're talking to more people. Guess what? They're not the right people. Test and adjust, test and adjust, test and adjust. If you stop doing that behavior that you've started doing pretty heavily in the last few weeks, if you just stop doing it, you'll eventually stop having conversations with people. That's how this works. It's a behavior. If you want to have, you need to become. How do you become? You establish a behavior. Okay, so I want to wrap this up and I want to give you the opportunity to share something with the audience that you shared with me. And that is, you, you gave me an example of if you were put in charge of babysitting a five-year-old version of yourself, mm -hmm. what, what is that and what's the main takeaway from that? Cool. So I will see if I can get this out as quickly and concisely as possible. There is a training that I walk my clients through called 51440. And those are the three different versions of yourself that indicate what you believe about yourself, what you believe about the world, and how you manage your life. Okay. Now, here's the question. If I showed up at your house with a five-year-old you, literally, like in real life, this is the five-year-old you. And I said, you are now in charge of this five-year-old person. They're a real living, breathing human being. I want you to look at your life and I want you to say, okay, cool. Would I let this five-year-old do this? Would I let this five-year-old do that? Would I give this five-year-old advice to avoid this? If you were actually in charge of the five-year-old version of yourself, what behaviors are you living throughout the day, every day, that you would absolutely not fucking let a five-year-old child do. Other people put this in, in the context of, imagine yourself as your own best friend, and your own best friend was having the issue that you're having. What advice, what guidance through pure love would you give your own best friend on how to change their circumstances? I put it in the context of a five-year-old because I've got kids and I know what it's like to have the responsibility of fucking being responsible for fucking children, right? That level of awareness of what you're actually doing to yourself through your behaviors, put through the filter of doing that to a five-year-old child or allowing a five-year-old child to live life like that will show you what you need to see to change what you don't like that you're constantly doing. I love it. That was when we had that discussion, that was one of those things that I was like, yeah, I would definitely not let five-year-old version of me do a lot of the things that I'm just subconsciously doing. I'm not even realizing that I'm sabotaging myself in these ways. Okay. This was a really deep episode. This was not, uh, this was not what, people are typically used to getting from you, but I have found over the last month or so of talking with you, this is some of the most powerful stuff 
uh, it feels like it was kind of a teaser for some of the stuff that we do behind the scenes. I want to end this episode, if it's okay with you, by plugging and saying that my experience in Influence Architects has been amazing and revolutionary for me. And if people are wanting to know more about what goes on in that area of your world, is it possible for them to talk to you about that? It is, but let's take our own advice. Let's eat our own dog food from the last episode and let me quickly let you know who you are, where you're at in your business for it to make sense for us to actually talk. You've been in business two to three years. You've probably went out on your own in this business with seven to 15 years experience in your skill set. You're actually really fucking good at the thing that you do. You're probably making somewhere between 100 and 300 grand a year. You might have a person or two that kind of helps you a little bit. You might have a medium-sized team. If that's you, that's kind of the minimum of where it makes sense for us to actually dive in and have a conversation of how can we take the thing that you've already got that's actually fucking working that's proven and gets results for people and you want a different result through that business for your life and it might look like something like this or feel something like this. You're out on your own. You're fucking killing it. You're making maybe more money than you ever made in the corporate version of doing it, but you don't have any time and you're getting to the point where you fucking hate doing the thing that you're doing. You haven't figured out how to raise your prices by double and cut your clientele in half. Maybe it's that you know your message is amazing, but you haven't figured out how to get it out in front of enough people and you don't know what the next version of the thing you do one-on-one or one-on-small group actually means in the world. You're stuck. And the amazing thing that you do in the world, you can keep doing it just the way that you're doing it. And you're doing it but you know there's more. If that sounds like you, it might make sense for us to talk. And how do people start that conversation with you? Send me an email at lp at the salesgorilla.com and just put in the subject line, IA question mark. Nice. Okay. If that is you, I highly recommend hitting Landon up. It's been amazing for me and my business. And I'm not just saying that because he pays me to say it. Also, if you want more episodes of this podcast, head on over to salesgorillapodcast.com. And until next time, we will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I don't like, and I'm sure it's the same. So peace out.